Hi, and welcome to MASH Talk, Mashable's weekly hangout where we talk about all things tech. I'm Christina Warren, Senior Tech Analyst at Mashable, and I'm joined today, as always, by Pete Patchell, our tech editor. What's Hello. up, Pete? How's it going? I'm also joined by Lance Ulanoff, who is our Chief Correspondent. What's up, Hello. Lance? What's up? And I have a special guest today in the way of Raymond Wong, our newest Mashable tech team member, or I guess second newest, and our, uh, our product analyst. What's up, Ray? Hey, yeah. Uh... So I, what, we've got our actually pretty exciting topic today. Um, you know, last week, the iPad, or I guess it was closer to two weeks ago, you know, the iPad celebrated its fifth birthday of its announcement. So we basically are now at the five-year point where tablets are a thing. And that got us kind of thinking. You know, we were like, you know, do you actually need a tablet? And I think that's a pretty interesting discussion and uh, something to think about. You know, five years in, you know, five years ago, tablets were were poised to become the, the, the next big breakout tech category. And sure enough, they were. And what we've seen happen is that, you know, there's this huge explosion in growth in tablets. Hundreds of millions of them have been sold. Apple obviously leading the way, but a bunch of them from a bunch of other companies too, in all shapes and sizes. And for a long time, people said, you know, this is going to mirror the smartphone market. There's going to be unstoppable growth, and the tablet market is going to become the PC market. But what we've seen happen over the last year or so is that, you know, tablet, um, uh, I guess, interest has died off a little bit. People don't upgrade as frequently as they do their phones. And, um, you know, laptop sales are actually rebounding a bit. So that opens up the question, you know, was this a fad? Is this something that's still the future of computing, which is what I, I think. Um, I, I think we just all judge the market wrong. Um, but, but fundamentally, getting down to our basic question, which is, do you really need a tablet? So we're going to talk about some of uh, the best tablets available right now. We're going to talk about utilities of tablets, and we're going to take some questions and answers from the audience. But before we do that, you know, I just want to go around the table and have everybody give their opinion. Um, do you need a tablet? I'm going to answer for me, myself first. I'm going to say, if you have a phone, probably not. You don't need one, but you sure as hell should want one. And that, 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 that's, my, that's my take. Um, uh, Lance, let's start with you. Uh, no, I, I think um, I think a tablet is a, a fantastic um, second screen device uh, for watching TV. Uh, I also, and we can get into this later. I also think that you can get a lot of utility out of tablets. Um, they are incredibly powerful for their size, uh, and I, you know, I consider it one of my critical go-to devices. But it's one of many. You have many what about you, Pete? go to devices. What, what is your definition? <laughs> <laughs> I do. They're in different categories, but I do have go to devices, a collection. Many, many categories. <laughs> all, right, all right, Pete, Pete uh, break it down for us. Do you need a tablet? Do you uh, really need a tablet these days? <laughs> you do not need a tablet. I think people have been saying this since the iPad came out, honestly. Um, like, I, I saw columns on the iPad well. We, like up to a year after it came out, going like, I don't know, I'm interested in this. I tried out the iPad. I don't know why I want it. You know, this kind of stuff. And it's and, uh, to which all those columns I say, no, you don't need it. It's just a slightly more convenient uh, screen than your laptop or your phone for a very some very specific tasks. Um, but you don't need it. I mean, no one needs a tablet. Um, the thing is, now what we've seen is... Um, you know, in the last few years, the phones themselves have gotten very, very good at those tasks as well, and the task being mostly video watching, reading. Um, reading is still superior on a tablet, but, I mean, that tablets are also, you know, quote-unquote squeezed a little bit by e-readers, too, which have gotten very cheap. So if that's what you're going for, an e-reader might be what you want to do. Um, so, no, you don't, you don't need a tablet. I, I think it's always going to have a place. I think what we're seeing now isn't so much a decline as it is just kind of a slight correction and a, an evening out of the market. Um, it's it's going to be a thing for a while, um, but I think you're absolutely right, Christina, that a lot of us overestimated what it would be, and, you know, we'll get to this later, and I'm sure Lance will have lots to say about this, but <laughs> the most uh, uh, prominent example of that is Microsoft's whole strategy around Windows 8 and the hybrid devices that resulted from it. There's been good stuff that resulted from that, but the huge push into that was probably wrong-headed. Um, but there is a big productivity push for tablets to sort of keep justifying their existence now. Some of that's working. 
Um, and I think this could be the year uh, where that sort of, they become the thing that they were sort of envisioned to be, even if it's not going to take over PCs entirely. Ray, what do you think? Do you, do you need a tablet? How many tablets uh, do you have, first of all? Let, let, let me ask you that first. How many tablets, how many tablets do you have, tablets Ray? do I have? I have an iPad 3, and I have a Sony, whatever the first Sony tablet was, the one with the little magazine curl in the back. I thought that was really cool. Um, no, I don't think you need a tablet anymore. Um, maybe the answer was different, as Pete said a couple years ago. As smartphones have increased in screen sizes, uh, you definitely don't need one anymore. Um, but, you know, I, it does serve a purpose. Um, you can't read digital comics on even a big smartphone. I, I don't think that's as great as on a tablet, um, especially if you want high-res comics. And you definitely can't do that on an e-reader uh, if you want color. Um, so I, I agree with Pete in, in what he says that, you know, uh, tablets are correcting their, their trick trajectory is correcting themselves. Cool. All right. So um, we're now going to, so basically you don't need a tablet, but it's good for something. So right. that's, that's kind of what, what, well, we're, what we're getting at. Yeah. Well, Lan Lan just, Lance just, is going to disagree with us a little bit. I, I am going to, because this whole idea of talking about what we need and what we don't need, um, what do we actually need? There's not a lot that we really <laughs> need. Oh my God, Lance is going to get all existential. <laughs> okay, thanks, well, Nietzsche. Thanks, dude. I just think it's a false argument. Um, you know, it's because there's no broad sort of set of of needs, you know, like... Well, you every, need a smartphone. Every, every human needs a tablet. Every, no, I, mean, I think the point is, if you, if you have a digital existence, and that is very prominent in your life, do you need a tablet to fully realize I, that? I just think that's the wrong question to ask it. The question is, can a tablet pro provide utility for you? Right. You know, of that's, course it can. Yes. Of course. But, but so can a Tesla. I, I don't need a Tesla. <laughs> well, you, you don't know that. Actually, you know, and, and I think I think that <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I just now we know why they're hiring so many Apple people. <laughs> right, they're they're trying to find out the secret. But um, I do think that um, there is utility in these devices because it's the trend is not about oh the trend toward tablets. It's the trend of the the screen becoming the sort of center piece of interaction with technology. I mean, that has, <clears throat> whether you're talking about uh, phones, touchscreen uh, laptops and computers or tablets, uh, or your ever, you know, your larger and larger HDTV displays which curve around you, your engagement with technology is through a screen. And it's the, the ever-changing technology of the screens uh, that is kind of the, the, the focus here. It, you know, the very, this is something I talked about for a while. It's like all these different screen sizes and people engaging with them. And a tablet happens to be this really sort of near-perfect form factor for having you know, a large enough screen that you can get things done, but nothing else around it to distract. Uh, so I, I think, you know, I just think when you boil it down to this question of whether or not you need a tablet, it ends up coming off sort of flippant. You know, like we're 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 just trying to to um, reduce it too much. Right. Well, wait, maybe the question: okay. is, What's a tablet good for then? Well, and I was going to say, let, 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 we're, we're going to get to that, but I think before we talk about what is a tablet good for, let's talk a little bit about what are our favorite tablets, because there are a million of them out there. Um, there are fewer out there than there were, say, two years ago, just because the market has changed a little bit, as we were discussing beforehand. Um, you know, I think most of us would agree that the, the iPad Air uh, 2 is probably the best tablet on the market, depending on what you're doing. I mean, and that does become a big caveat. But um, I, I, wanna, I mean, my, my personal tablet that I use every day is an iPad Air 1. And uh, I love the iPad Air 2. I just I haven't felt the need to upgrade, but, but I love my iPad Air 1. I use it every single day. I use it to read. I use it to do email. Um, I use it to, uh, you know, surf the web, watch videos, watch Netflix in bed, um, and uh, play a Candy Crush Saga, uh, Soda Crush, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, but I want to hear from you guys. I'm going to start with you, Ray, since you're our product analyst. What, um, what's your favorite tablet right now, and what do you think is the best tablet out on the market? Uh, what... What is the best tablet out there? I'm, I will probably say an iPad too, and that's not because I like Apple products, um, but mainly just because there are a lot more tablet apps 
optimi tablet optimized apps out there in the App Store than on Android. On Android, it's mostly blown up smartphone apps uh, still, even years later. Um, so I'm going to say an iPad too, Air too. Okay. Um, but if what about talking, you? Uh, what about, yeah. But if you're talking, then I'll go on. If we're talking Android, I just reviewed the uh, Dell uh, Venue 8 7000, and I think that one's a great and fantastic tablet, Android tablet. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, you you um, it, it didn't do everything it said it was going to do, right, Ray? But it but it ended up being a really good tablet. Well, as a consumption device, as a reading device, as a you know a laid back second secondary screen that you use on on the couch while you're watching uh, TV or something like that, you know, it's on par with an iPad uh, Air. Very cool, Pete. What about you? What's uh, what do you think is the best tablet out right now? What's your favorite tablet? Well, I mean, not to parrot everyone, but I mean, the iPad. I mean, is you know, it's the gold standard. It, I when, the thing I always say to people is like, hey, I want to get a tablet. You know, like, what should I get? And then I'll always come out with like, like get an iPad. Like, I'm coming to your senses. Why are we even considering another tablet? Why are we even having this conversation? You know, Why are we even talking? Just get yeah, an iPad. The other, uh, I I would with again your caveat of what are you gonna do with it? Certainly if productivity is your goal, it's like, okay, well, then let's bring Windows into the equation, and maybe a Surface uh, Pro or something might be your thing. Um, but for just tablet stuff, it's like I want most people just, I want a tablet, I want to give something to my kids, I'll get an iPad. Now, yeah. I'm going to also not say it's my favorite tablet, uh, my only favorite tablet. I, the experience of the iPad is great. One of the things it really suffers at is multi-user. Um, right. And as a parent... Multi-user matters a lot to you, and that's why, honestly, my uh, I thought about this a lot before this uh, hangout. What what's the tablet I should show uh, as something I use a lot? Well, I mean, actually, it's it's the Nexus Seven from uh, from a couple of years ago. Well, I was like last year, I think 2014. Was that the latest I mean, one? No, no, 2013. No, 2013. This 2013 tablet, right? It's still a good tablet. I mean, it's running Lollipop, uh, so it, you know, it's a Nexus device, so it's got the latest. Um, but what I love about it is, like, I, I, at the instant I do this, I turn off the power, and then I try it again. Okay, so it's on the lock screen. Tap that up there. And then there you can see my, my son's icon is on there. And <laughs> it handles this really well. And Jack, he's five years old. He knows to do this. It switches to him. And then there's no code anymore. And he has his, you know, Angry Birds. And I can <laughs> completely regulate that. And... Uh, and it's it's awesome, and this is something the iPad cannot do. Um, so it there are it's better than it used to be. It cannot do that, uh, which is too bad. Um, but I wanted to put this out. I really wanted to love this one. This is the Kindle Fire Kids six inch. Um, I've set it up similarly. You can see the Angry Birds there. This is Jack's sort of environment. Um, UI not intuitive. I'm sorry, this this strip thing, it's just nothing beats an app array and just kind of, you know, the grid and finding your things. Jack doesn't quite know what to do here. He always calls for help. Uh, <laughs> this thing to the point where I just don't, I just don't um, give it to him anymore. Um, so, you know, it's a mix of the iPad and this, and uh, I, I, I like this one a lot, and if the iPad weren't so darn good, I'd probably yeah. give him to this all the time, but uh, he he kind of prefers the iPad most of the time. So, well, I think that's interesting that he prefers the iPad. I think that says a lot about um, what a, a good a good uh, experience they've built. And, and and to your point, I think that when a kid's tablet, when they kind of uh, you know make these interfaces that are supposed to be easy to use, but they end up instead being kind of crappy and kind of hard and unwieldy. It's like just go with what's good. Just copy. If if you're, if you're going to copy anyway, just just copy the good experience. Now, Lance, I think you've reviewed more tablets than any human person should ever have to review. I think this past fall, you had something like you had like a Samsung tablet. You had the iPad. Air too. You had the new Kindle Fires. There were like two of them. You had like a Nook tablet. You had like another Samsung tablet. You had like a million things. You've got the Surface Pro 3. Like you've got like every tablet known to man. So and and you've already agreed. You've got all Nietzsche on us and been like, well, what is the definition of the word is and what are needs and what is this and that. So we know you love tablets. What's your favorite and uh, or what are some of your favorites? Uh, I mean, obviously the um, the the iPad. Yeah, the iPad uh, remains my favorite. Oh wait, this is the very first. I iPad. was gonna say, I was gonna yeah. say, look at that monstrosity. <laughs> what is that? that I mean, five that years, you guys. Thing. I know, five years. Happy birthday to this guy. This is my original <laughs> tablet. Um, still works great. It's built like a brick house. 
Yes. I swear, if you don't realize, zoom forward. Don't don't fling that thing. Zoom zoom forward. forward Five years. uh, Wow. There too. I mean, and this thing, of course, I can hold like this. So this this (laughs) remains. This this remains my favorite tablet. uh, Sort of do everything tablet. Uh, And actually, I'll I'll be honest. I, I. one of the things that surprised me over the last couple of years is that I think the iPad, the iPad Minis are fantastic devices. Now, I was disappointed in the most recent iPad Mini because they didn't really upgrade the hardware with the exception of adding a, um, a Touch ID. Uh, but that size, I, I can still do so much on, at that size. Yeah, I'm a little surprised with Pete, what Pete said about the um, the Kindle Fire Kids edition. That interface is a reflection, though not a perfect reflection, a reflection of the Fire OS that you will find on a Kindle Fire HDX tablet. Uh, those tablets, uh, which uh, I've tested most of them, actually Raymond has the one that I've been fiddling around with. Uh, super thin, light. Uh, the interface as a carousel, which holds the most recent things you've been, you know, using, or if it's a book or it's movies. I just think it's very smart. Um, I, you know, I'm never a real fan of the Android operating system, and that is underneath there. And every once in a while, you can ultimately kind of get to that. And it usually, the main point area of disappointment in Android tablets is the app area because you get yes. these duplicate apps. You're like, why are there five different apps for the exact same thing? And they've got slightly different names. And this is, and often they're from the same company. It, it's, it can really throw you. And I, I've always hated that. But I think as a, you know, it it works incredibly well. It's it's got a great processor. It's got good res, really good resolution. It's good for gaming. It's good for movies. Uh, just like the iPad. And now, you know, again, the iPad is a better designed product. It's more attractive. Um, it still has more power. You know, one of the things I kept doing in that whole run of testing these tablets last uh, last fall was running benchmarks. And if you only went by the, the numbers for the CPU and the GPU, you'd think, oh, well, all these other tablets are going to outperform the iPad. But that was never the case. In fact, the iPad just kept beating them, especially on graphics. It was really something to see. Uh, and I, you know, I use the iPad for all sorts of stuff. Uh, one of the things that I like to do actually is draw. Uh, yeah. And I'll even, uh, let's see if we can make this work. I'll put this up here. Because this is the kind of <laughs> stuff, and you don't realize, like, how difficult these things can be to do. You know, basically... You're drawing frame by frame. I don't know if it's still running there, but you're drawing frame by frame, and and this is like a, a it's a a GPU intensive thing to run this kind of stuff, and it does all kinds of uh, artwork or art intensive things that you would only have thought were possible on a PC. So speaking of PCs, because I do want to mention this, because you guys have brought it up a few times, the Surface Pro 3 tablet. Um, <laughs> I'm conducting this Hangout through one of those right now. Um, I don't think of it as a tablet, I have to be honest. I think of it as, a, as an iPad, uh, as a, an, a MacBook Air competitor. It's an Ultrabook replacement. I have it docked here with a keyboard. I'll take it out. I'll, I'll use this keyboard when I'm, uh, when I'm on the go. <laughs> Great battery life. Full Windows power runs Photoshop. Uh, you know the Creative, uh, the um, the Photoshop Creative CC Cloud. Creative Cloud. It runs uh, Lightroom. It, it handles everything. It's but Lance, it does all that other stuff that iPad does. Do you ever do you ever rip out the keyboard and do a little Netflix, do a little drawing? I mean, that's you can do all that stuff on your Surface too. I have done some drawing on the Surface, um, not as much. It's not as thin a device, so it's really, you know, it's it's right now I'd say it's twice as, almost twice as thick as the iPad Air, so it's not going to be as comfortable to draw with. Um, and I haven't, wa- I haven't done a lot of movie watching, but to be honest, I don't watch a tremendous number of movies on the iPad. What I do on the iPad is a lot of social media, a lot of browsing, a lot of reading, um, and then a lot of drawing. And uh, what I do on the Surface Pro is a lot of work. Right. A lot of writing, mm-hmm. um, a lot of editing. 
you so, and I you know, we, change all that sort of recreational stuff to the surface if you wanted to, though? Is it just what's what's wrong yeah. with the surface in that regard? I mean, I let me throw one thing out there that I suspect yes. is the, the web browser on the surface, particularly the one that is in full screen, the full screen IE maybe just isn't as good as the experience you might get on an iPad. That's that's what I find. Well, well that, uh, that is true, but of course I'm running Chrome right. on the Surface Pro. I have not touched, you know, the, the, currently what you have um, in this version of the OS is you have two versions of Internet Explorer. You have one on oh. the sort of Windows design side and you have one uh, on the, the desktop right. side. And awful, awful. Yeah, I mean, not to give look, you know, and I don't want to go really far into this, but let's just keep in mind, Chrome is not a perfect browser either. No, it's a, it's no, a, no, we're not trying to say that. We're saying the idea of two web browsers very, that don't talk to each other on the same interface. Right. That's what's awful. And that's and that kind of stuff is going to be solved in Windows 10. Um, and this this product will run win, Windows 10 like all of them. But you know, again, to equate to fully equate Surface with a tablet. I'm not sure is the right thing to do, and in fact, that's not how Microsoft is marketing it. Right. Uh, that's you know, a very now. Good point. now. Now, well, exactly. Right. But I think that was a smart correction for them because when they yes, it was swimming upstream, trying to convince people that this was a a, a device that you would just as often use. Into, I think that. You know, I will have. I'll walk around with the keyboard flipped to the back, but I don't want to lose that keyboard. I really like using the keyboard for input. Right. I was going to ask you about that because that's one of the problems that I've had, and I've used like a Surface Pro 2, um, which is not as, as nice and not as advanced as the Surface Pro 3, but it's still a, a, a good machine. And one of my bigger issues with it has actually been trying to use it the way that I would use an iPad, meaning the on-screen keyboard hasn't felt as responsive, even though I know the screen is good. And even though some of the apps are touch optimized, it just still doesn't feel quite there. But it's great for doing real work. If I have a keyboard hooked up to it, I like the experience there just as much, if not better, um, than I do, you know, with, with um, trying to do work on an iPad. But, when, but but it does seem to me, I think you're absolutely right, Lance, that the Surface Pro 3 is a great device, but it's a great laptop. It's a laptop that you can, if you have to, use it for some tablet functionality, um, but it's really a great ultra-portable. It's not, as, it's really not in the same category as, as what we've seen with these other devices, and that's both for good and for bad, I think. Right, and, and the other thing to keep in mind is I do really gain benefit out of the fact that this is a touch screen device. Device. It's a, to me, it's a touchscreen laptop quite often. So I, I touch the screen all the time. And then when I stop using this, if I have to use another laptop, I actually, I'll touch the screen. I'll be like, <laughs> nothing's happening. So, uh, so Lance, you're not getting any of that gorilla, gorilla fatigue, arm fatigue that uh, you know when you're holding your hand up for too long. No, you screen, no, no I, you know, I built up tremendous <laughs> muscle. So because I, I'm going to do this through the rest of the talk. I was going to say, you guys don't know this about Lance. You guys don't know this about Lance, but he actually is super strong. He does like 100 push-ups a day, and we, you seriously, like, he's like, he's like a CrossFit expert. You don't want to go against Lance. And I'm, and I'm genuinely not joking. Like, I'm not being facetious. I'm not making fun of Lance. Like, Lance is more healthy than all of us, and, like, I would not want to get in into, like, a, a race or a, a fight with Lance at all. The Apple health data. Yeah, all I know is I'm, old, old, I'm older than all of us. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> and you're in better health and stronger. So really, like, you're, like, yeah. But enough about me. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so, 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 I mean, I think that this actually is, segues really nicely into a conversation about utility because I think that this does kind of, you know, Lance, you're talking about how you use your iPad a lot to draw and, and to consume social media. You know, Ray, you use it a lot kind of as kind of a bigger phone, you know, to watch media. You know, Pete, your kids uh, use the, the iPad and, and the, the Kindle. Um, a, a bit, or the Nexus quite a bit. I use mine a lot for kind of a mix of things, but especially reading, watching movies, playing games. Um, what's interesting is somebody, uh, Greg uh, Ribka in, in the chat brought this up. He said, you know, there's a clear utility to a tablet if you have a smaller smartphone and a larger laptop, but what if you have a phablet-sized smartphone? and a MacBook Air size laptop. In such a case, is the incremental utility of a tablet large enough? And I think that's an interesting question to talk about, especially when we talk about like how does the average person use a tablet. And I actually think that the Greg's point is something that Tim Cook even admitted 
to what's been happening with iPad sales, you know, they still sold 21 million of these things last quarter, but that was down from a year ago, and it's been a, a you know subsequent year kind of decline in, in tablet sales. Um, and, and he said, you know, what's happened is that the bigger size iPhone is, has cannibalized things a bit, and, and, and the and the MacBook Air has cannibalized things um, a bit because there hasn't necessarily been that incremental utility shift uh, that, that makes enough sense for, for all people. So I kind of wanted to know what, what you guys think of that because I, I do think it's an, it's an interesting question. As our phones are getting bigger and bigger, you know, I'm, I wrote an article a couple of months ago where I called the iPad Mini the new iPod Touch. And my point with that was that at this point, you know, the iPad Mini, even though it came out um, and it's a great size device, as Lance says, for a lot of people, the iPhone 6 Plus is kind of their perfect tablet, perfect tablet type of device. And unless you really have uh, needs for that screen size, I think a lot of people will be just as well served with something that is slightly smaller, but gets you most of the utility stuff um, of, of a you know iPad with with an iPhone 6 Plus. Um, on the on the cross side, you know, I think that there's arguments that we can make, and I think we want I want to talk about this about what the utility of a, of a larger form factor tablet is. But, you know, to, to Greg's point, when we live in this space where there are basically devices available in all screen sizes, um, is it, are we at the point where with our phones becoming the true center of the computing universe, that um, if you also have a laptop like a MacBook Air and you have a bigger phone, it still makes sense and you can still get true utility from a tablet? I mean, assuming you're doing... Um, you know, you're not doing a lot of digital comic reading or, or other things. What do you guys think? I'd like to, to start with Pete. Very little. Um, I think there's not a lot of reason. Like, I mean, if you have an iPhone 6 Plus and, say, an 11-inch MacBook Air, and this would be the, where it's tight squeezed the, the most, yeah. it doesn't make a ton of sense to get an iPad. No. I would say the only reason you would do it is if you want access to the games um, and those kind of experiences, uh, those iPad media-rich experiences where there is an iPad app that is very media-rich that is different from the iPhone app and takes advantage of the X in the processor, that is the A7X, a whatever it is now, because um, it is still, um, um, it is a different processor still, isn't it, with the quad-core graphics? Yes. So, I mean... It is. You do have some apps that take advantage of that. Um, I wouldn't choose to play, say, The Walking Dead on something less than a, a 10 inch. I've, I've played that game. It's very, very, it's very good use of the large iPad canvas. I mean, you know, there there are experiences where it's like, okay, I do want that bigger screen. I want that processing power that takes advantage of the graphics, but I don't want a keyboard because that's probably going to get in the way of my experience to a limited degree. Um, so those, there are, those are very few. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're not into that, then uh, stick with your 6 Plus. Uh, and then when you need to do some real work, you know, fire up the MacBook Air. And that's that's my thoughts. What, what, what do you think, Ray? Uh, I'm, I, you guys are saying everything I want to say. Um, <laughs> you're no help, Ray. You're no help. <laughs> tablets are definitely feeling the squeeze from both sides. I mean, if you have an, a tablet, especially like, you know, not just an iPhone, even like a Nexus 6, which is already a 6-inch <laughs> That's true. Like, that's already reaching into mini tablet territory. And I know we all made jokes a couple years ago about, you know, mini tablets turning into phones, but now phones have turned basically into mini tablets. And if you have also a uh, powerful... Uh, Ultrabook or, you know, a Chromebook or 11-inch uh, Air, the screen difference is not that much. Um, going from 6-inch to a 10-inch to 11-point-6-inch 11, 11 or 12-inch is not much of a difference. Um, and you're getting the best of both worlds. So you're getting mobile on your phone that uh, has a big enough screen, and you're also getting a keyboard experience on your portable laptop. Lance, tell us why we're wrong. <laughs> I guess I feel like we're always ending up talking about a zero-sum game. Oh, well, if you have this, you don't get that. If you have that, they don't buy this. Um, I do, I, honestly, I do agree that, you know, the larger phones have definitely created this, um, I don't know if it's almost like market confusion because people are, are not sure of which direction to go. They're, they're, 
you know, the, they're, they're seeing this continuum of screen sizes, and you really can choose like an almost per inch basis what you want to buy. But of course, you have to sometimes on the in betweeners, you're going to be switching uh, platforms, which is pretty much a no no for most uh, consumers. They're on one platform for good. Uh, I think that. I kind of agree with Tim Cook. There's still a lot of room uh, for, to, for growth on the tablet side, despite the fact that these these larger phones exist. Um, my so my phone here, obviously, uh, my iPhone six is 4.7 inches. I you know, yep. I never actually thought I'd own a phone this large. Uh, Same. Because I I loved my um, my iPhone four. Um, I loved my iPhone 5s. And um, I've really come to enjoy this, but I'm not going to give up um, a tablet experience because I got a larger phone. You know, I like to, I do like to play games on this, and you can't really play these kinds of action games on, you know, on a smaller device. Uh, I can't, and obviously, maybe I'm a special use case in that, you know, when I'm drawing, I can't draw on a phone. It's just, yeah, I was not enough room. I was going to ask you about that. Since you do do so much drawing, I mean, that seems like a really specialized kind of utilitarian focus where especially, you know, there are styluses, you can use your finger, there are all these great apps. Apple's actually right. been running this promotion this year where they, New Year, New You, where they're showing this amazing artwork that's been created on iOS devices and on Macs and things like that. Um, but I wanted to ask you, you know, as an artist, as someone who draws a lot, do you find... Um, you know, you were talking before how you like the size of the iPad Mini. Is that still enough room for you to draw, or do you really need that 10-inch canvas? Do you do you feel to to, to really draw? You know, I've honestly I don't think I have anything on here, but um, I'm I've been surprised at what I can accomplish on a, on an iPad Mini because I I didn't think. I didn't actually think I could draw on something so small. I don't think I have anything on this this guy here, but. Um, yeah, I can still draw at that size. The screen is what a couple. I use. I lose probably like eight square inches wise. I might lose as many as eight or ten inches of drawing space. But you know, here's the thing: when you're drawing digitally, you can zoom in and out, right? So the size of your canvas is not actually the size of the screen. It's often much larger. Uh, and in on both the iPad Mini and the iPad Air. I can zoom in. They're, they're obviously they're they're Retina HD and you know and higher, and you can you can get down to you know this pixel level to manipulate your art. Um, but you know even though this is a this is a, a, a high resolution screen, it's just not enough room to work. Even whether it's with my fingers pinching and zooming, or it's working the stylus, I have drawn a little bit on there, but it's just not optimal. You know, at some point you need a certain uh, amount of space. Now, going more towards straight utility, uh, you know, you know, Office for iPad exists, yeah. but you can also run Office apps on the phone. And I've done that a little bit, but it's really not a great experience. It's just too there's not enough space, but I can do. I can work on on a device this size, and I can write a story, uh, whether I'm typing it direct on the screen or using a um, you know one of the attached little Logitech keyboards. So uh, you know you do need. I feel like even a. I don't even know if the six. Maybe the six plus, because to me that's that phone is too large to be a phone. Right. But perhaps the six plus for some people is. You know the reason to get that is so you say, okay, like Pete said, I don't need anything in between. I got my phone, which is also great for sort of on the fly getting stuff done. And if I have to really do stuff, I go to my laptop. Yeah. Um, so I, I do th want to actually bring up a kind of an interesting counterpoint to, to what we're all saying. And, and someone who uses his iPad Air 2 as his full computer, and that's um, my friend Federico Vici uh, from Mac Stories. And if you go to MacStories.net, he has a post up this week about um, why the iPad became my main computer. And and Federico is, is an interesting guy in that he runs this website Max is where he basically is the, the primary author and writes incredibly in-depth articles with lots of screenshots, lots of visuals, lots of uh, very complex uh, kinds of layouts and he does all of it on his iPad Air 2. He has all kinds of, of, of fancy apps that do all kinds of amazing things that will you know, uh, squish down images the right way and upload things to his server and, and format text the right way and, and he, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting read. 
to kind of see how he is had he's been able to kind of take the iPad Air too and make it his personal machine. I really respect that and I think that he's amazing. I personally don't think that I could ever get my workflow to work that way. I'm just more comfortable with with the mouse and keyboard and with some of my text expander shortcuts and some of my other workflow things. I, I just don't think I could do an iPad that way. But when we're talking about utility, and I want to go to you on this, Pete, you know, Apple has signed this mega deal with IBM and it's it's going to be a big part of their strategy where there are a lot of businesses that are starting to actually realize, you know, for what we're doing when it comes to doing inventory, when it's coming to doing input, sales presentations, uh, filling out forms, um, all kinds of specialized use cases, the tablet can really work better than a traditional laptop, and I would argue better than a phone because you do have more real estate, as Lance was saying, because it's it's good anytime you have to sign anything, and I, I think anytime you need to really read anything, there's um, a, there is something about having a bigger screen that's just nice. What do you think about the future of kind of more of this utility? focused stuff, especially when it comes to productivity and kind of the office place around tablets and, and the future that they might have with work, um, where if we're maybe not thinking about it in the same computing paradigms where we use laptops with a mouse and keyboard, but we're thinking of other ways of input and maybe apps that are not designed to bring what was the desktop experience to the tablet, but are designed with the tablet experience in mind first. What do you think of the potential there, and do you, do you think this is just a lot of smoke, or do you think this is something that could actually really represent a future for for computing well it's taller um it's uh, <laughs> it's sorry to jump all that on you i just figured you know you're a tech editor you think a lot about it there's a lot of the the, the apple and apple's been moving some pieces in this direction for a while i mean i think you know separate from the hardware the introduction of icloud drive has been a really big um I'd be curious to know if Federico uh, switched over pre or post iCloud Drive, honestly. Um, it was probably sort of a transition, but I'm sure that helped a lot um, last fall when that happened. Um, and then you basically had, you know, finally, I mean, there were, there were other ways to do it before, but, I mean, now there's a, a system-wide sort of file system um, that you can do on the iPad now, which uh, that has opened up some big doors in the productivity department. Um, so I think, yes, uh, there's definitely a lot here. Um, there are many uh, situations, jobs, productivity situations where the most natural thing to do is touch and using that sort of interaction with the visuals as the um, primary way of, of uh, sort of using the device. So um, that, uh, that has evolved. I mean, you can see definitely in their marketing Apple's all about, you know, getting stuff done, these creative expressions, you know, it's all scattershot in their latest ads, like boom, 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 you know, you can, you can design motorcycles and all this other stuff. Um, so this is, you know, it's not smoke. There's been obviously the rumor of the iPad Pro. Right. Um, and in the context of all of this, it makes some sense, though, if, and if that were to happen, and still if, um, it would represent, and this is separate from our discussion a little bit, but it would sure. represent a shift on Apple's part in terms of what kind of, who their market is and who they actually are building products for. Because um, it would be the first time they built something for business sort of explicitly. Although, you know, there's been fun games you can do on a 12-inch iPad. <laughs> well, this is uh, true. It's just, just to, you know, to remind folks that I mean, Apple has over the years built, I mean, they've built actual hardware just for business. The first Mac Pro in the, uh, I guess it was right. in the 90s, yep. they built that because, you know, businesses couldn't get enough power out of the, the early Macs to really do the things they needed to do. So more, you know, better processors, more power, and that's how they positioned it. So this was the, what if you could have a Mac that could actually work in business? Um, but they, you know, they've had... Their greatest success over the last um, decade plus has been on the consumer side. Uh, but when I've spoken to um, Apple and IBM about kind of this, you know, this shift in in major major um, industries, big industries to toward um, mobile work. Um, there's definitely been this recognition that there's been the tools that people want to use, like the hardware. Like they've looked at the iPad and went, ooh, that looks good, but they didn't have the applications to run 
and to do actual work on them, not the applications that the industry is like transportation needed. So this partnership that we see is, is a big turning point for the iPad and this next one, this 12 inch one that we expect to see um, sometime in the near future is a big step in that direction. It's all about um, business and is all about competing to a certain extent with something like the Surface Pro, which is ultimately a hybrid device. Right. So we're going to kind of go and take some some user questions right now, um, but this actually flows off of the discussion we're having. So Casey Cotton, both on Twitter and in the chat, he says, you know, are tablets really at the same program handling level as current laptops? And I guess what he means by that is, are today's tablets really powerful enough to run programs as well as actual, you know, laptops? Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go to you next, Lance, and I'm going to go also to Ray um, and Pete. But I you know, from my perspective, yes. I think that the, the apps haven't necessarily been written to take full advantage yet, but we're seeing some tremendous stuff happen in, in these apps, and, and they're tremendously powerful. You know, the GPU um, in the, the current, you know, iPad Air 2, um, I think it was Anantec ran it up against some of the, the, the speed marks against an iPad Air from, from a year or two ago, and it was better. Meaning that it's you know as good. The performance is getting really, really close. Um, so it's really coming down to you know I think uh, what you want to do with this stuff. And for certain applications, especially when it comes to three D modeling, when it comes to certain art stuff, you know um, I would argue that you could probably get more from a tablet that's priced the way it is than you would from a similarly priced laptop. Obviously, you can do better with a more dedicated machine. But there are, are applications that can do things um, you know on the iPad that that are that are incredible. I, I don't think it's a matter of our you know, they up to the handling power. I think it's more is the software there yet. What What do you think, Lance? Well, um, I I've been saying this to to some people recently that uh, it almost seems, and I don't want to oversell these things, but <clears throat> it almost seems like there isn't a limit to the power. Every time I try something, on, in particular on an iPad, but also on some of the other tablets, you know, uh, you know, with with decent power like the the Fire HDX, uh, I am pleasantly surprised at what they can handle. And just to go back to art, I was kidding around, I was holding up this piece of art yes. for a second, but I want Amazing. to explain something about drawing something like this. When you draw digitally, you use layers. Every layer is something that the processor has to handle and has to keep in memory and has to keep you, and I can do as many layers as I want. I can manipulate them, I can compress them, I can move them around, I can, you know, I, it, it doesn't, there's no stuttering. There's no stopping. Um, you know, same thing when you look at um, the graphics, uh, the the gaming graphics, the game that I was playing, the racing game, Asphalt 8. Um, yeah. What you'll notice if you play the game is there's no skimping on the physics. They haven't, you know, I'm driving and water is splashing on my windshield right. and I'm seeing the drops. I'm seeing the game. That's all happening. And if you know anything about gaming game programming and right. gaming engines, you know, that is that is a lot of hard work. And, and you know, Apple, and I know there's the Metal Engine, you know, it, it just handles it beautifully. So the reason to not buy a tablet would certainly wouldn't be, oh, there isn't enough power. There is. It goes back to that same essential question, what do you want to do with that power? Um, I, I know Apple likes to say there are, what, like like hundreds of thousands of apps, right? But f to me, that's a confusing thing. I don't need hundreds of thousands of apps. I need to know what are the apps that I can use to do my thing. Uh, and if you, if you have a task in mind, you're trying to do something, you look and you find the app, you probably could, should feel confident that it's going to be able to function the way you hoped it would. So Ray, you know, you review a lot of tablets and, and you've done a lot of benchmarks and things like that. What, what do you think of that? Do you agree? Do you think that there's enough power in these things? Um, and it might maybe it's the software that that isn't quite there yet, or from your experience, you know, testing both laptops and tablets, is there still like a big disconnect? Uh, tablets definitely have a lot of power. Every year, you see an exponential uh, increase in terms of performance, of processing, the graphics processing. Um, even more RAM for certain tablets. Um, and, you know, they are starting to rival the specs of low-end uh, Ultrabooks from just a couple of years ago. Um, we're even seeing Intel Atom-based uh, tablets, which is on the low end of whatever Ultrabooks were out just three years ago, you know? Um, so they do have tremendous amount of power. Um, but, 
again, it's the apps. Um, what are you planning to do with it? Um, you know, I use Photoshop a lot at home, um, but you know, I just don't find Photoshop particularly intuitive on an iPad. Um, or you know, there are certain apps that I just can't find, or it just can't be substituted on iPad. You know. Um, but they're they're definitely powerful, um, and and if you're into like serious gaming, uh, I think the Metal Engine is really going to push things forward. No, what what about you, Pete? What do you think? What what can you not do on on your tablet that that you would like to do? Is it, have you run into any you know issues where you're like you know what this just isn't powerful enough? This this game doesn't work right. You know, loading these web pages isn't fast enough. Dealing with this 3D stuff just isn't good enough. Are you running against any speed blocks? Have you found, or is it really more a matter of the, the software's not there? Speed blocks, no. Um, it's a, it's a you know I hate to sue the apples and oranges a little bit. It is a little bit. I mean, yeah. You kind of look at. Um, iPad, you know, you talk about iPad versus iPad a couple of years ago. I mean, really, if you're looking at the iPad Air 2 today and you want to actually do this fight fair, you'd want to put it against, like, a Core M or a, a Core i3 even or a Celeron or something. So it's, um, it's uh, you know, and I think if you looked at those, you'd probably still see, well, you know, I mean, tablets there are awesome, but, I mean, they're not, you're not going to get, uh, I mean, you might. I mean, I, I don't know. But the thing is, it's the experience, right? So it's like, one of the things I run into, and this is on mobile too, I mean, just because of the way iOS and Android are, I mean, multitasking, much, much better than it was. I mean, you don't have that instantaneous click on the Chrome window behind whatever, and it suddenly comes back, not maybe necessarily instantaneously, but certainly faster than it does when I switch it on an iPad. It's that kind of, uh, you know, whether that's the processor or the OS, I mean, the experience is the experience. So, sure. There's that, um, but I mean the big advantage of tablets, and I think the iPad in particular, and why it's so everyone, all all of us are saying get an iPad. I mean, for so long developers have been developing specifically for this device, and and they still are. I mean, with the resolution, they know the processing power. They're not going to put an experience on that that is going to be too far beyond whatever it can do. So they're going to it's it's going to be in fact completely optimized for the iPad. So. In terms of what you're doing in any individual app, yeah, the iPad's going to kick ass. I mean, because the app was designed exactly for this device, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, duh. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you basically, first you answer Lance's question, what are the exact apps I want? And if they're there, get it. <laughs> because those apps will run on the iPad. They're going to run amazing. And, you know, they could, they'll only get better with every iteration. So, um, I, you know, the whole speed, is it faster than a Core M, you know, Ultrabook now? Probably not. But, I mean, you know, at, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, it's, it, if the experience are sort of there, it's going to give you a great – it's going to give you what you want. And it's, awesome. worth, it's worth noting, too, that, you know, when you get something like an iPad or an iPad Mini, um, you know, you're, it's not like this walled garden where, you know, okay, you're on the iPad and you're trapped. You know, if you're, for example, viewing a web page or working on a document and you want to print it, you just, you know, hit print and your Wi-Fi connected printer is printing out the page. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it works just as you would expect it to, you know, and obviously they integrate through Continuum with... Um, or con is it continuum or continuity? Con no, it's continuity. It's continuity. continuity. They see they're mixing them up. Uh, they are. With all of the other, uh, you know, Mac OS X devices. So you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, these iPads are just sort of one piece of the puzzle that connects to uh, a broader set of uh, digital devices. Yeah. Well, you know what? This uh, this uh, is all the time we've got. We thank you guys for your questions. Um, before we end, you know, I just want to kind of get everybody's final thoughts on tablets and kind of where we are five years on. And, and I'll start, and then we'll go around. You know, I think that five years ago, everybody doubted that the tablet could really become a thing. And then we quickly thought that it was going to be the biggest thing ever. And as Pete pointed out, there's been kind of a market correction. And maybe it's not going to replace laptops. Maybe it won't be as big as phones. But I still think it's a valuable market. You can get a lot of stuff done with it, especially if you know what you want to do. They're great consumption devices, but they're also great creation devices too. Maybe you don't need a tablet, but as Lance says, you know, who, who really knows what anybody needs. But I know that my life is certainly a lot more fun <laughs> and a lot more engaging because I have my iPad. Um, uh, Ray, let's, let's go to you next. What, what are kind of your your final, you know, big picture thoughts. Five years of tablets. Five years ago, did you imagine that you would be uh, spending as much time with tablets as you do now? 
I definitely did not. I was actually one of the people <laughs> who were in the camp where, you know, oh, it's just another big I, iPod Touch or iPhone, you know, and I, I think a lot of people were like that until they actually start playing with it and playing with tablet-specific apps, which is why I guess a lot of people don't really like Android tablets as much as because those are really like big smartphones they're really just going, because yeah. the apps are blown up and they're not optimized specifically for the larger screen and they don't take advantage of that. So um, I, I personally am still using my iPad 3. I use it every day for reading and I, I, I love it. And I don't know if I will be using it as much in a couple of years because I might get a bigger iPhone, um, but you know, it's possible. I think a lot of people are gravitating towards larger phones instead and just leaving their iPads behind because um, an iPad or a tablet isn't really something that's really great for bringing out and using out in public. Um, a phone is more convenient for that. Um, my tablet is just tethered to my sofa all the time. So. <laughs> now, 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 Pete, you were talking to us earlier about how you know your son, uh, Jack, uh, is, is really good at using uh, the Nexus and, and knows all about all this tablet stuff. But he's super smart and he's getting way into this stuff. Five years from now, do you think he's still going to be using a tablet? Um, and, and what do you think, kind of in general, give us your final thoughts? Um, yeah, that's a good app summation, I think. Tablets are great for kids. Uh, <laughs> that's my final thought. I still love it. Uh, that's awesome. It's, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm the one. I'm, uh, you don't probably probably don't need a tablet. I mean, you, you <laughs> phone, you're going to get most of those experiences. Uh, if you're an ultra, if you're really interested in tablet games, get a tablet. Um, if you're interested in getting work done, get a laptop. If you're interested, you know, I mean, there's there's not a lot of call for tablets anymore. I mean, there's a few experiences, but not a lot else. But, I mean, kids love them because of the natural interaction of the screen. Um, it's a great thing to hand them. They're fairly durable. Uh, um, <laughs> so, yeah. But, I mean, otherwise, I mean, tablets are, are, are corrected. They'll always have some utility. But I've, I've got to be honest. Like, I'm, this is from my perspective. I hardly ever reach for my iPad. Anymore. I get so much done on my phone. You know, and when I really want to, the, the, the advantage, you know, I don't do a ton of Netflix. If I was doing more of that, maybe. But even then, I mean, when I when I curl up in bed with some, you know, uh, Downton Abbey or something, I mean, I'll, usually I'll probably use the, use the keyboard because of that extra utility it provides as a stand. You know, the iPad, you're kind of flapping around. Someone's got to hold it. No, just use the keyboard and, you know, it won't stutter. So, you know, it's not... Uh, you know, sorry, tablets. <clears throat> you know, you had you, you'll still be around forever, but I don't have much use for you anymore. So sorry, tablets. Pete, Pete, uh, uh, just doesn't like you anymore. Um, he's just not that into you. It really, tablets. Pete's just not that into well, you. Just, Lance, this is get an iPad numbers. Come, just just don't get one. <laughs> just don't get one. Just get an iPhone, right? All right. <laughs> just don't get one. All right, Lance Ulanoff, our chief correspondent, take us home. Give us give us your final summation and disagree with everything Pete just said. <laughs> so I, I just think it's incredible <laughs> that you know we've gone from this in five years. I remember the initial excitement uh, to where we are now with the iPad Air 2. And you know, my opinion, uh, tablets are here to stay because it's about working with screens. Uh, touch devices uh, are a, an incredibly intuitive, intuitive way to interact with digital content uh, and to uh, consume and communicate and also create. Uh, and I think that the ability to do all those things on these tablets are going to make them a mainstay now and in the future. And also, here's a preview of what you'll see in maybe... 15 years or 20 years in the tablet world, it'll be a tablet that is basically as thin and as flexible. <laughs> Do you guys just watch Parks and... You roll it up yep. and you put it in, yeah. But, uh, the, yes, the, the, the augmented reality or whatever the hell that is on Parks and Recreation. Uh, I was going to say, that's amazing. The Grizzle tablet, I love that. It folds out. It's got It's like the HoloLens and the tablet together. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I so... Tablets are, are, are definitely not going away. It's only a question of how thin and how cool they can get. All right. Well, you heard you heard it here, folks. Um, thanks so much for joining us for MASH Talk. You can join us every Friday at 2 o'clock Eastern, where we're going to talk about the latest things that are happening in tech. For Ray Wong, Pete Patchell, and Lance Ulanov, I'm Christina Warren. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>